Okay. Yes, it so, started. Yeah, I can't see. Usually I've got the notification, but oh, here we go. Here we go. Um, so welcome to this uh, DSC community call. Today we have Andrew, Jason also joined, um, and unfortunately uh, Steve uh, is not able to join the call, but uh, Andrew will be able to answer all the, the questions you may have around the work that is going on in DSC. And I'm sure Jason has some insights as well. Maybe we'll be able to share. Um, before we go through this, uh, we just want to uh, give a quick update on the activity we have and a few um, other announcements. So Johan can't make it today, uh, but he prepared that before, so you can just look at the DSC community and the next call. And uh, there's um, there's a few uh, resources that have been released, not that much at the moment, but there's work going on at the moment. Um, uh, I'll so I let um, so there's a few work there's a work going on at the moment in X Exchange, and uh, there's still a lot of things. I think there's a lot of things in the pipeline. Uh, there's still reviews that is to be done. And sorry, I got so much sound. And then uh, you see Mike has no longer time to maintain X Exchange, so we need a new maintainer. So we, if you were using X Exchange. And, and if you want to support this, uh, just show yourself and say, hey, I would like to help contribute uh, maintaining this repository. Uh, SQL Server DSE, there's uh, more PR uh, to be reviewed to unblock contributors. And there's still, uh, we still, uh, so Johan is still working on fixing all the tests, porting all the tests to PESTA 5. Traditionally, there's lots of tests running, but it's still PESTA 4. PESTA 5 is really mature now. All the toolings that we have should be supporting PESTA 5. So it's just a matter of converting the repositories. And as Johan is going through the SQL Server, DSC is also gaining some experience. So if you have some issues trying to port or just write PESTA 5 tests for DSC resources, uh, make sure you let it leave a comment. Probably the best place is the uh, PowerShell Slack or PowerShell or Discord Slack. Um, and uh, you can find us in the DSC channel. Um, so yes, Kotkov IO had deprecated the bash uploader. This is what we've been uh, using before and uh, recently broke and we can no longer publish the code coverage. Uh, so um, there, there's a new uploader and this is the link to uh, update if you're using kotkov.io. Uh, not all repositories are set up, but I think a fair few are. And um, there's also, uh, we using, usually we use two things. We use kotkov.io to uh, upload the code coverage and have better feedbacks and then it creates uh, comments in the pull requests. Uh, so we're using it in a few, like a fair few uh, repositories. And us usually we also use another thing, which is uh, uploading the code coverage to Azure DevOps. So there's two different things. That is uh, only the codecov.io uh, service. And we, we do also use the code coverage to um, CodeCov to put some rules around reduction of code coverage. So there's some automation in there as well. Yes, it usually so tells you yeah, and it tells you the the delta, you know, how much, um, how much, you know, if you went under a certain threshold, and then if he wants to break the the check and things like this. Um, there's a few releases that happen. I've seen there's a lot of work going on SharePoint DSC. Uh, most of them, and Yurik, if he's around, he can comment. No, he's not. Um, so. Um, most of the work, I think, is for reverse DSC. Like at, at least there's a fair bit of work on uh, reverse DSC support. Um, SQL Server DSC, that's what we mentioned earlier. And uh, Dan, do you know about computer management DSC? Was it you? Yeah, that was that was me. That actually was been in preview for for quite a well eight or nine months. So this is just a m number of bug fixes. Uh, no no major new features. Okay. And then there's still works going on in those ones. So ex, uh, config manager, config manager, CBDSC, and uh, PS, uh, XPS design spec configuration DSC. More previews. We should uh, give us feedback. And if you think uh, if you think that is working fine on, in preview, we should just release uh, the 9.20 and then make sure everyone can benefit from those changes. Uh, and again, there's uh, there's work going on for SharePoint DSC. Uh, we are making a fair few changes. We changed a lot of the tooling recently. Uh, not no major change. Mostly it's uh, some improvement, refactor in sampler, and um, uh, some bug fixes for DSC resource test. 
uh, especially we did recently we did quite a few changes for either tasks or the supports for Vista 5. And uh, yes, there's still change going for uh, within Sampler and there's more to come, but uh, it's minor. It's either new features that uh, are not used at the moment or it's uh, bug fixes or refactor, but no change in the features nor the API. And if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, I have access. Oh, yeah, I have access to the chat. So, if you, uh, if, while Andrew is speaking, if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And then, when it's time for questions, we will be able to raise them, raise them to Andrew and Jason. Any questions so far? Next point. I want to uh, remind everyone that if you're interested in the PowerShell Conference Europe, then uh, feel free to go and register your interest. Um, on this website and uh, you can go in there and there's no tickets for sale yet, but you can put your name on your email address and then we will be able to send you uh, information as we release them. Um, for now, what you can see is uh, we're doing it uh, in Vienna, Austria, which is a new location. It used to be in Hanover, Germany. Uh, so uh, we are changing a bit um, where we're doing it and we're starting to work on the CFP and the, the CFP will be released soon and we should uh, start the selection uh, uh, make sure the selection is done let's say by early next year and early 2022 and uh, if you have questions feel free to reach out to me or or any of the organizers um, that are listed at the bottom here so there's uh, Patrick, Tobias, Rob and Alexander and myself and if uh yes and if any questions just oh yeah the best the best thing to do is to uh, to follow psconf eu on twitter and every information will be provided there all right without waiting any longer if you want to take over andrew feel free to share your screen or just talk so sorry let me introduce andrew first andrew is um, is a PowerShell team member and he's been doing work which is very much interesting to us because he's been working on uh, DSC for the new PowerShell. So maybe you can receive the new new PowerShell because I believe that's going to be released in 7.2. So if you want to tell us more about this. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Andrew. Um, like Gail said, I'm uh, from PowerShell team and um, um, I've been working on updates to the uh, DSC module, specifically PS Desired State Configuration module and corresponding code within the PowerShell uh, uh, to support new scenarios. And uh, uh, I'm going to go through these scenarios in a second. Let me share the screen. OK, so. Um, it's, a, it's a bit it's, tiny. If you can make it slightly bigger, that'd be great. OK, hold on, let me see. I can probably share just one window at a time. Well, yeah, hold on. This is why you should be using the Windows terminal. <laughs> OK. OK, how about now? Yes. All right. So, so we'll, we'll, I guess, then we'll first go through the high-level overview, and then we'll look at the example. Um, so, uh, changes were done uh, around PS Desired State configuration module. So, the updated module um, is called version three, uh, and corresponding changes have had to be done within the PowerShell itself. So these changes are done within the PowerShell 7.2. So all of the information below is uh, uh, specific to this combination. The primary uh, uh, goal of the work was to make this module uh, a cross-platform and make it a single code base, uh, which works uh, exactly the same on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, specifically, they're essentially kind of two entry points to the to the to this functionality. Uh, two commandlets that are shipped within the module and uh, configuration compilation, uh, which is invoked 
by the PowerShell itself when it sees that it's uh, uh, that the user wants to execute a configuration script. Um, specifically, uh, the main bottleneck which was preventing this from happening was uh, uh, MMI slash libmi dependency. So this is essentially a, a native libraries that I that were previously used for uh, serializing and deserializing MOF. So this dependency was removed in uh, V3 uh, uh, and uh, well, this is internal implementation detail, but uh, now the code no longer uses, there is no mentioning of MOF in it, there is no mention of sim instance types in it, it now uses PS objects whenever it needs to. Uh, the, another change which was uh, uh, done, I guess it's kind of a long-term architectural uh, goal that we decided to do as part of this work is to uh, support class-based resources only. Uh, uh, Gail, I know, can speak a lot on this, uh, but the essence uh, as I see it is the specifically script-based resources were causing desyncs between the uh, the MOF and implementation to way too often, and that was a problem. So there, such problem does not exist with class-based resources, obviously. Yeah, uh, just the key element there is uh, when we were writing MOF resource, basically we needed to add the metadata. So the MOF was the right. metadata that was needed right. for the functions, but because we go class-based, everything is in the class by using the attributes, the DSC property attributes and the uh, class, the, the DSC resource attributes as well. So there's no need to have anything else when we use the class. Exactly, yeah. Uh, next item is, uh, the way how things are at this point, specifically in PowerShell 7.2. So uh, at this point, the DSC v2 was not removed or altered in any way uh, within the PowerShell 7.2. Uh, uh, we just added the v3 functionality uh, side by side. Uh, and uh, the way which version of the DSC to use is done uh, according to uh, uh, to these rules. So for commandlets, uh, it's uh, they are driven by by what version of the module you load within the PowerShell. So if you load uh, version two, you will you uh, you will be able to use the you know existing MOF based functionality, existing V2 functionality as it always were. There are no changes there. For config compilation, it is slightly uh, more difficult because the the uh, call, the initial call, is coming from the PowerShell itself. So to use V3 uh, for config compilation, the V3 uh, module has to be loaded first, and then you call the the, the configuration, uh, and PowerShell compiles it using uh, V3 functionality. Uh, the default uh, again, for, config, for configuration compilation, the default is version 2, so no changes there. Um, uh, this is more of, impl of implementation detail, but it's still important. It's something that was on the PowerShell uh, radar for a long time. So the PSDZ state configuration module, it, it on the high level, it consists of two parts, uh, the, the top level level part of the module that's that's PowerShell module code and uh, it this code calls the C sharp code which is a, which was embedded in the PowerShell code base. Now uh, uh, for, for quite some time uh, you know PowerShell is, is trying to reduce the, the the size of its releases as much as possible and not every PowerShell user is using DC is uh, uh, so the, having DSC code within PowerShell was uh, not the ideal situation. So with V3 changes, this code was moved out of the PowerShell repo uh, as a subsystem, and it was moved to this uh, to the repo that 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 is handling the PSDZ state configuration module. Can can you just explain very quickly what the, what does that mean uh, for the subsystem and why that was not possible before? Um, 
so I'll I'll show it an example uh, uh, shortly. It will be mo a little more clear. But uh, essentially, Perfect. the concept of the subsystems it's uh, is it is something that PowerShell implemented. I think is in seven point one. Uh, it, essentially, it's it's uh, uh, um, a, a piece of C sharp code or a library that can be dynamically loaded and potentially unloaded from PowerShell. So if there is a piece of code that has to be in C sharp as opposed to, for example, PowerShell script, then uh, and it's 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 somewhat uh, tied to the PowerShell engine itself. Uh, it's it's better to implement it as a subsystem uh, and load it into PowerShell this way. But generally speaking, it's just a PowerShell term. It's not really related to DSC, so like don't pay too much attention to this. It's it's more of an implementation detail. Yeah, but did Andrew, it, could I, oh, yeah. I if, if you don't mind, if I I'd just like to interject a little bit more about the subsystem is um, Andrew's right that that came out in seven one. And the idea behind the subsystem, Dongbo put this together uh, for us. We initially used it for both DSC, and you may notice that we've used it for our predictive intelligence for additional predictors. The idea behind the subsystem is this. We want to reduce the size of the PowerShell footprint. So we need a way to be able to handle some things that need to be dynamically loaded in and out. And so this is what we've started to create and build off of. And, and our first real offerings um, on this are really the DSC and our predictive IntelliSense. But expect us to expand this as we go forward in this approach of being able to reduce the uh, PowerShell footprint. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, right, so the uh, moving the DSC code from the PowerShell code base. Yeah, so that's about... Um, uh, an important motivation as well for this work. Um, now, the 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 top portion of of, of the PS Design Set configuration module, the 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 PowerShell script portion, it had relatively minor changes. So um, uh, there was some different. We had to slightly tweak a way of uh, the way methods are invoked. So this is uh, um, we're talking about. Um, uh, invoke DSC resource commandlet here. Um, and the other thing is the previously when you generate a, a configuration uh, MOV file, it used to have some metadata around it, like date of generation, who generated it, what was the machine name. So uh, we had a feedback from uh, an internal team who is relying on this functionality. Um, so we uh, removed that metadata who had to remove that metadata. So that's the other changes. But generally speaking, changes to that portion is relatively small. So uh, like if you previously, uh, uh, you know, had to investigate, uh, you know, that the PowerShell piece of the PSDZ state configuration module, it stayed pretty much the same. Uh, important change. Uh, so this module is no longer ships with uh, power, will, will no longer be shipping with PowerShell releases going forward. Um, so, uh, we, for example, today you will download uh, PowerShell uh, 7.2 Preview 10, the latest one, the latest preview from the GitHub page, and you will uh, check its module, modules folder. You will not see PS Desired State Configuration module there. So, uh, the recommended way of uh, getting this module uh, going forward is installing this from PowerShell Gallery. Now, um, uh, I want to highlight that from the partial gallery, obviously you can install all previous versions which are there on the gallery. So version 205 is was published to the partial gallery. You can install it from the partial gallery as was um, version 3, which technically is called 300 beta 1. So both versions are, are available on partial gallery and you can install either one. So that's um, that's the uh, kind of high level changes. So um, like if the, oh, I stopped sharing, sorry. Um, we can quickly go through an example and then we'll we'll get to questions because the example is really is really short. So here we have a PowerShell 7.2 hey, preview 10. I'm hey, sorry, Andrew, go ahead. 
Uh, sorry, yeah. Andrew. Could you make that a little bit bigger? It's hard, kind of hard to see. Uh, does this make it? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Oh, that's thank bigger. you. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll scroll it, sir. Okay, so here we have a uh, uh, PowerShell 7.2 pre preview 10. So, uh, like I said, it doesn't come with the with the PSDZ set configuration model. So the first thing we do is we install it from the PowerShell gallery. Now, uh, uh, a good way to check if the version three is installed and working correctly or not is through the uh, is through the subsystems, those that we mentioned before, right? So. At this point, we just installed the module, but we didn't load it yet. So when we run get PS subsystem, we see uh, two subsystems here within PowerShell. Uh, that's uh, command predictor. That's the one Jason was mentioned, right? And now we have cross-platform DSC subsystem, which is uh, currently not registered. If we list the modules, we see that there is no PS design state configuration module here yet. Now we import the module and we list the mod loaded module. So now this module is loaded and it is the correct version. It's 3.0 beta 1. Now we call get PSF system again and loading of the module is, is causing the subsystems to be registered. So now we see that the cross platform DSC subsystem is registered. So now we can use the V3 functionality. So, you know, call and get this resource. We listed some, I have some test resources on the machine, so. Uh, and at least all resources are class based. You know, you won't see any script based resources here, no composite resources. That's the change that uh, we previously mentioned. And uh, example of the compilation using V3 functionality. So uh, as we discussed previously, first we have to import the V3 module and now we're able to compile the configurations that are aligned on uh, V3 resources. Uh, and I, yeah. So that's uh, pretty much it. Let me share the, um, the list of the features again. Um, okay, so uh, that's it. I guess we're open for questions. <laughs> oh, hey, Andrew, just one quick one. Um, did you mention composite resources are also going in V3? No, composites at this point, uh, composites are not supported in V3. I mean, obviously, it's something that potentially can ch can change uh, if if there is a uh, a significant request from the community. Um, but uh, at this point, composites are not supported in the in V3. Gotcha. What do you so, mean not supported? Are they not supported in the compilation process? Neither. Uh, neither. neither. No, nowhere. So so script based resources and composites, they will be like silently skipped through like the system won't even recognize that they are partial, that they are DC resources. Hmm. So I guess we don't use them often. I think it's just XPS desired state configuration use them. Do you Gail, do you know are there many resources that use composite? Uh, companies, because the company is using them a lot, but yeah, um, but not always. So usually it's compiling when you compile for the MOF. So uh, it's very convenient when you use, you know, let's say, um, a DSC in uh, in WMF 5.1, like using the LCM and doing this. That's you have to use composites pretty much for this use case and the one you know Andrew has been working on. It's true that it might be less used, but it might still be a good abstraction to have. It's a good abstraction to have. So so we'll see. We'll discuss. Hey, Gail, <laughs> do you mind if I, um... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it, it, Andrew, thank you. And and just so that everybody knows, Andrew's head is really in this code space. This is a great time to to ask him questions. But let me give you kind of what the idea is um, currently with with DSC v3. I mean, a lot of the work that that Andrew's been doing and a few folks have been doing have been making changes to support uh, guest config. And along that, so that's really where we are today. But looking forward with DSC, um, 
you know, this is going to take some time as we as we have this version three out. We wanted to make sure that V2 was still out there, but we are making some substantial changes. And there is going to be some tooling around this to kind of help you with things like I already have some resources, some script based resources. Do you have a way to help me kind of try to convert these? So we, we are making attempts at getting some tooling and to help make some of these changes. But really what I'd like to say is this, is that with the changes as we go forward, we are open to having a conversation with the community about what they'd like to see DSC um, start to evolve to as we kind of put in these these kind of like beginning ground rules of, of, of what we, what makes it easiest for us to both uh, maintain and build on the DSC code going forward. And so these the changes that we're making today not only help guest config, but it really helps us to be able to, to react and to maintain. So. I mean, as a community, even in this call, or if you want to reach out to me privately through email or something, and we can have a conversation, we're very open to hearing. Okay, this is this is great, thanks guys. But where do you want to? Where do you, this is where I think it should go from here. Yeah, let's have that conversation, and we can talk about that as we move forward. So I just wanted to throw that out, um, you know, along the way. Thanks. Yeah, and you can find Jason as well on Twitter. Just say. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Throwing you under the bus yeah. as always. And of course, Raymond's uh, comment there is, is probably quite quite important for datum there. Um, I'm going to jump. So thanks, thanks, guys. See you then. Yeah. So something I wanted to add with uh, with what Andrew's been doing because uh, I had the opportunity to consume a lot of this. Uh, it's amazing to see you know when you write your DSC resource uh, and then you can write your DSC resource for Linux, and then your DSC resource works on Linux exactly the same way you do invoke DSC resource, get DSC resource, and that works on Linux, and, and I love it because that's great. Yes, you need to have the version 3.0 beta 1, but then but then that works. Um, so it's good to be able to, and that's new. I don't know if you followed what the DSC for Linux used to be back in the day when it was um, made available, you know, with, with the OMI and things like this, and um, the resources that existed, so NX, uh, sorry, uh, yes, uh, NX, um, oh, I forgot the name. Um, you, you had a, a few, so you had NX file, NX file content, um, you had like some NX tools, and you can see on the uh, uh, MSD, um, the TechNet uh, documentation, it's probably not called Docs MSFT now, sorry tired and um, so you can see what they were doing but those were not powershell resources so now if you write a powershell resource with code compatible with 7.1 you can run those powershell resource on linux and that's new and that's thanks to uh, all the work andrew has been doing in there and, and and that's great so you can use these kind of resources for um for for linux and you can build your linux and i actually i, I if you, I can show you at some point, but uh, I've already started to create um, the resources for Linux. Next. Yeah, and I would kind of second what Gail just said. If you've, if you worked with DSC on Linux when we were using the OMI server and stuff like that, that that was a nightmare. And it wasn't, it wasn't a nightmare because it was really hard. It was a nightmare that there's no way that people are going to do this. And it, it, for most companies and all that, they're going to add all this to their their Linux boxes, and it, it was it was problematic at best to work with. So the work that Andrew's done, and now that we can cross-platform DSC in what appears to be a much normal, seamless way, um, is really a huge improvement. We consider that a really big win over you know the the previous great technical accomplishment, but certainly difficult to use OMI stuff. So. Um, yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Gail. No worries. I'll just try to be polite and then say it was a nightmare. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> it took me five minutes to say what you said in one sentence. Um, uh, so, so Andrew, so what Andrew said, and I think it's important to highlight is um, before it was not possible to. So, even if the PS desired state configuration PSM one was a PowerShell module the whatever was uh, made available for uh, doing DSC, that means the compilations and uh, you know the configuration keyword, all of this was a, a mix between this module and the engine. So the work that Andrew done thanks to the subsystem that Dongbo did before um, is now we can have everything just shipped at the module. And it's not part of DSC anymore, but that's the good thing because now you can have the, the um, the module to be released 
at its own pace. It doesn't have to be shipped every time with uh, PowerShell. It's just a separate module like any other module which is independent and it doesn't have to be at the same time. So my next question for Jason and Andrew, and sorry because Steve is not there, otherwise I would put him on the spot. When is this module going to be open sourced? Da, da, da. Uh, sorry, it was coming off mute. I got that. I got that. I got that. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is one of my, um, yeah, this is one of my current things that keep me awake. Um, this is going to be open source. I'm really glad to be able to say that. Um, and let me just tell you what we are doing uh, while we're in the process of open sourcing this. We are transferring all the documentation um, around, uh, basically kind of more over to our docs folks. And we're improving the existing documentation, making some corrections there. And we're also going to create some transition documentation to help everybody out. Now, you folks are going to be probably well ahead of the curve on, on that. But um, here's what our current time frame is on this. And, and let me just say that this could adjust a little bit. Um, so I was talking with Michael, and it's really uh, between Michael Green and I to kind of figure out the best time to do this. We are pretty much... Uh, we'll be ready to open source it pretty soon. Um, we're thinking, though, that the best time for us to do this is is probably around uh, springtime, around uh, uh, spring build time is what we're thinking. However, let me just say that um, we might do it a little bit sooner uh, than that. It just depends on if we can get all of our ducks in a row for that. But we, the best news is this, we are going to open source it. So there you go. <laughs> I start speaking and then I forgot I'm on mute. Sorry. Very long day. Um, so, so that's a good news. So that means you will open source it and um, is there any other plan that you are aware of in the area, in this module, specifically for the module? Any other plans as in we're going to open source it and we're delivering this? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Is, is there is there a roadmap for a DSC things that you want to do? Okay, so maybe that's a question we should ask yeah. Steve when he's back. Oh, actually, that's a really good question. And the answer is we're working on the roadmap and that's why I'm offering. And I wanted to make sure that I, I said to everybody that um, please, if you want to have a conversation about what things you'd like to see as DSC moves forward, let's have that conversation. Our important step right now is making sure that we we get this buttoned up and we start handing, handling any you know, bug reports and that kind of thing, and that we could open source the module. From that point forward, yes, we'd be very interested in not only what we're, you know, kind of missing here with this, but where you think the direction should go in the future. So we'll build that roadmap together and get that out in front of everybody. Yeah. Um, so for just for people to know, so this is this. Uh, so what Andrew's been creating and and what we've been describing so far, this is exactly what guest config um, is using. And I can tell you, Evan, maybe I shouldn't, but I can tell you that there are teams uh, working at at leveraging this. So then uh, it's possible to you know you're writing the resources, so then you can consume those resources through Azure guest config. And if you haven't tried it, I would, or if you don't know much about Azure policy guest configuration, I really recommend you to. Uh, go back to, I can't remember exactly when it was, but a previous community call where um, where uh, Michael came and then started like really explaining, you know, what the service, what it does and things like this. We've done a few times, but I think one of the last ones uh, was pretty informative as well and, and more up to date than the previous ones because things are getting released quite often. Let's put it like this. I can't keep track of the releases and the changes that's happening. So, um, We'll open the floor for more questions if you have any, and feel free to ask Andrew or Jason any questions you may have. You need to unmute and just ask the question. I see Kevin, your lips are moving, but uh, but I don't know if you were saying anything. No questions from anyone? Okay, so I have maybe a question for Andrew, if you can do a live demo right now. Uh, there might be a bug, so 
it's fine. I just don't want to put you in the spot, but I haven't had time to send you a message for this before. Um, someone was saying like they can't find, uh, they don't seem to be able to uh, do a get DSC resource for a module, which is using class based. So I remember working with you with that, so I'm pretty sure it's, it will work with the right module loaded. Um, but um, maybe you can show again uh, the process that you've done to load the module, like you know the uh, when you shared your terminal, and then I will uh, tell you the name of the resource, which is DNS server DSC, and then we can try to just maybe you can try tell me if you don't want to, but you can try to install this module and then just try to find it. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about uh, debugging a very specific uh, case. I'm not sure that will be interesting for all the attendees. Well, I'm pretty sure it's going to work, but OK, so so it, it's fine. So the idea well, is just... I mean, I, I can kind of, uh, uh, OK, let, let me share the, the screen again, and I will kind of go through the overall yeah, so, process how the thing works okay yeah that's that's the idea so so if you if you want to see and uh, if it works and if you want to reproduce it uh, it's important to follow the, what was on the screen uh, yeah that's what, what it's doing now well it's uh, it's relatively straightforward right so it it all comes down to the ps module path environment variable uh, well again first of all you need to say that the the correct version of the module is loaded right Get module is one way. Uh, get uh, uh, PS subsystem is another way, right? So, if the module is loaded and the subsystem subsystem is registered, that's already good news. <laughs> now, if if your resource is not shown up in the uh, get DSC resource, uh, first thing I would check is uh, the location of the module of the PowerShell module with that resource. It should be one of the paths within the PS module path, right? So, in this case, if I do get DSE resource, uh, and and uh, like you see, all the resources, well, in this case, all the resources are under my uh, users documents folder, right? So that's why you see, that's why we we're getting them within the get DSE resource. So that's uh, one common area of you know. Uh, um, uh, one one area where previously resources were not found be because of this, right? They were they were not within the PS module path. Now, second uh, area where resources were not visible is uh, was that uh, the well, it's a common thing for for a class based resource, but the class the DSC resource class. It has to be mentioned within the PSD one within the, the modules manifest file. Otherwise, uh, it won't show up. So th those are the two kind of uh, you know problem areas that, Com that common issues. Before. Yes. Yeah. The the other one. So the other one I've seen is is just people uh, missing the first step, which is importing the uh, the module version three. So if you have you know if you have the two modules and if you just do import module PSD set configuration based on where this is and how your PS module path is done, right? Yeah. You need That's to be very point. careful about that one because sometimes the problem is just you're not loading the right version. You're loading the old version because uh, the your PS module path first reference the folder which has the version two. And and especially uh, sometimes I think that happens when you use um, VS Code and you do that within VS Code because maybe VS Code has a path which is slightly different than um, what you have. So that really depends on your system. Be really aware of this. Yeah, that's a very good point. Um, yeah, the, the, the PowerShell has a very long and complex history of how it constructs PS module path when you like spawn one process from the other like it's it's not very trivial uh on the other hand um uh, uh to the best of my knowledge right the default we're talking about default scenario like absolutely clean installation of powershell uh, in the in the in the default clean installation of powershell the first location uh, in the ps model path is the uh, users uh, powershell module location within the current user documents folder well, on Windows and corresponding things on Linux. Uh, now, when 
when you install the module from the PowerShell gallery, this is, I believe this is the default location which it, which it uses, which means that once you install the module from the gallery, it will by default will, will appear in this directory and this directory is the first one the PowerShell will check when it's when it's searching for the for the module that you want to load. Another way that's that's actually uh, 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 well avoids confusion in some cases. So the imports module, right? When you import module like this, it will follow the rules like Gail described. So it will it will find the first module that appears in the PS module path. Right in the first folder that yeah. has the module in the PS module path, which is right, right, right. Tricky. Right now, if you have, if you know that you have on the system installed uh, uh, same module but with different versions, right? There is a parameter called required version on the import module command, and you can use that to enforce saying, okay, I want to import exactly this version of the module. So this way when the uh, PowerShell will go through those locations, even if, even if it finds the module with the same name, but another version, it will skip it. It will keep searching until it finds the, 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 the right version. So this is one way to enforce it. Uh, yes. And also like for the current V3, you have to specify uh, this allow pre-release uh, parameter because uh, technically it's uh, uh, beta one. It's a release version. Release version, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so, yeah that's, so that's why I wanted to make sure, like, people have really clear in mind is when you want to check this. So definitely look at what you have loaded, as as uh, Andrew showed you. Yeah, get the module. Look at you if you are the right module. And you, what I do usually is I can't never, I can never remember. You know, it's three dot three dot three dot zero dot zero dash beta one. I just say minimum version and then three dot zero, and that just I'm sure that three dot zero will be above this one. And and that's uh, how you do it. So then it's not going to load the version which is uh, two two no that's another one uh, two o five correct the version two is two o five at the moment. So yes, you do you do this. Uh, that's the install module, but the same principle. You do a minimum version three dot zero dot zero, and that will install the pre-release version. Yeah, import module. That's the one. So if you do that, you will get uh, you will get the latest version, and you don't need yeah you don't need the pre-release allow pre-release for the import module. So that's the command. If you run that, you are sure that you're running the last. Uh, you're you're importing the last thing. Otherwise, it will fail, and that means it can't find the module. And in this case, you need to make sure you install it. Yeah. Nothing imported, and then if you do that, you have the right imported. Exactly this. All right. So so that's uh, that's exactly what I wanted to go. So so you said a very important point. Also to make sure it's uh, it finds the class based resource, ensure in the module manifest of the module, you say which DSC resource to export, and that should be the name of the class which has those. So if I remember correctly, for class based resource, even for class based resource, uh, the sampler template should be able to uh, just add them for you automatically. Sampler template is uh, what uh, the DSC community is using. So if anything is not working, let us know, and then we can get a hold of Jason or Andrew and then ask for more help. But um, I've been using this for a while, and and that's working fine. Yeah. So uh, uh, on this topic, just one thing to mention, um, right? So um, uh, if you find bugs uh, for now until the repo is is uh, is uh, uh, open source, please file bugs in the PowerShell repo. Just put the DSC in the in the title somewhere so uh, maintainers will uh, triage it appropriately appropriately and mark with the specific DSC tag. Now, uh, uh, when the when the when the PS desired state configuration the repo will will be will become public. Uh, I'm assuming all those issues will be moved there. Uh, but you know, for now to keep track of things, uh, bugs should be filed within the PowerShell repo. That's a great assumption, Andrew. We are going to migrate those issues over. And thanks for pointing out. Please put your issues into the PowerShell repo. Tag them with DS, D, D, DSC, not DNS, as I started to say, um, and we'll we'll get them uh, taken care of. Thank you very much. Is there any question? I can see some people join on the way. James, hi. Ryan, hi. 
no questions so um i see like in the chat window i see people uh, asking about composites um and and if there's potential to add them uh, uh later on so um um like jason will correct me well of course but i i would say yes right so the functionality that we covered today that was it, it's something that that we absolutely had to have for guest config essentially right it doesn't mean that with that that like uh we will stop at this point right it's uh jason said it correctly right the uh the if, if, if there is a sufficient request from community for a particular feature, we're more than welcome to have a discussion about it, right, and 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 potentially implement it. In this context, uh, I want to highlight this. Uh, one of the items that that, that that we've covered today is the coupling DSC code from from the PowerShell code base. It actually helps a lot, specifically in these scenarios, because this way we can um, add functionality, a DSC functionality without uh, going through the very strict uh, uh, policies of the PowerShell repo. Because like uh, like I said, right, for V2 and prior DSC code, half of the code was within PowerShell repo. It was part of the DS, it was part of the PowerShell engine. Now we've, we've done work to extract it to its own repo. So, uh, for example, potential support for composites, it will it will be done only within the DSC. It can be done only within the DSC repo. It doesn't have to touch PowerShell repo at all this way. So it makes things easier uh, to implement. Um, so, yeah, that's 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 basically as that's that's that holds true for all um, for any DSC related feature. That's that's my point. Yeah, the release process is much simpler when it's not the PowerShell uh, repository. And um, I have another question following this uh, cheeky one. Have you heard about uh, the idea of compiling the MOFs to something else than a MOF like JSON? Uh, you mean co compiling uh, configuration? Compiling, yeah, compiling the configurations as JSON instead of compiling them as MOF. Um, well. I've heard this idea. Yes, but that's all I'm going to say about it at this point. <laughs> I'll just repeat what uh, Steve. It, it, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Gail. I was just going to say I was I was uh, 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 Andrew's not being coy. It's just that um, you know we're we're in the midst of a lot of conversations, and that happens to be one of them. Um, yes. And I don't know where we're going to land yet exactly. Yes, but I, I just wanted to I just wanted to highlight that uh, that was one of the ideas. So one of the ideas was to uh, change the way the compilation works, so then it would not be more because there's no point, as as Andrew said, and um, everything sim you know uh, management interface uh, MI has been removed now, or most of it is at least has been removed. At some point, it would be good to completely remove at least from the PowerShell code because there's still something left in there. Um, so it would be it would be good to uh, being able to remove this, and then that means completely not rely on um, uh, not rely on anything MI and, and these things. So when you do the compile, well, is if and when uh, we don't know. Obviously, as as Jason said, and I don't know much. I don't know more than these guys. But um, if at some point it's time to change the compilation to something like Jason, this is when uh, they will touch on the compilation, and that would make more sense to uh, think about the composites at this time because compilation is only compilation on the compilation side. That's just the point I wanted to make. Yeah, thanks, Gail. And just so that I can make myself absolutely clear, it would be my desire uh, to have the compilation to JSON. And I know that the JSON isn't necessarily, you know, doesn't get me a whole lot of fans when I say the word JSON, but there's a lot of benefits to it. And so, yeah, that is actually my desire. And Gail, I think, it, you know, you raised a great point because when we touch the start talking about and touching the configurations, that's when we want to talk about composites and all that kind of stuff. So. So thank you very much for your time. If there's no more questions, you've got a few more minutes. Otherwise, I will free everyone up. Is there any more questions for Andrew and Jason from the PowerShell team? No? OK, so uh, how can we reach out to you guys? 
before we let you go? Uh, well, 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 since Gail already already threw me under the bus for Twitter, there's one way. Uh, <laughs> the other thing is, is that you can send an email to uh, to me or or uh, you can file an issue, of course, in, in the PowerShell repo. But if you you want to start getting some ideas and that kind of thing, I certainly want to spend some more time talking with Gail specifically about, uh, you know, moving forward and what we're looking at and with with this particular community. And if you want to email me directly and and we can start a conversation, that's fine, too. Sweet. Thank you very much for you. And, and same, like, so if you have anything, just remember to file an issue or comment the issues that exist. Make sure you search for the issue before, like search for the DSC issues to so make sure you're not duplicating an existing one. And then you can see uh, there's also lots of comments and informations in, in the issues usually. So um, you can have an idea of you know what's going on and things like this. And sometimes you discover a lot of gems of the things being worked on in the pull requests and things like this. Just, just leaving that here. <laughs> <laughs> that was the case for the work Andrew was doing at some point. I said, "Oh, this this request looks interesting," yeah. and and I kind of knew like this is like hmm, that looks interesting. So yeah, and then I've been I've been lucky to be able to work with Andrew. So there was, uh, I know there's a lot of work that's been going into this, and now to me, as far as I've used it so far, it works really well for Linux. Uh, so I'm really happy with uh, with what comes there. So thank you very much, everyone. And if you have no more questions, then uh, see you next time. The next DSC community call is in six weeks. And I should have looked uh, more closely at when that is. And you can always look at dscommunity.org. Um, you have information about the community call. So dscommunity.org slash community underscore calls slash next call. And um, you have the agenda, and usually you see the next one, and the next one will be the in six weeks. I don't, sorry, it's, that bit has not been updated. I just checked, and it's not updated. Sorry for us. Um, so anyway, if you look at the same file, you have the ICS file, so you can put that into your calendar, so you have a reminder, and you can very quickly join this uh, Teams meeting. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, everyone, for coming here. And have a good day, evening. Um, can you stop the recording, please, uh, Jason or Andrew? Uh, I uh, try, try and I hang stop. on. I think I got it. I think I got it. I think I got it. <laughs>